Well, good afternoon, church family. We are so honored that you've uh, joined us for this online gathering. Uh, we're preparing for our prayer gathering this evening. And uh, so just want you to, to invite you, if at all possible, to come and be a part of that. I will summarize what I'm going to be talking about. I've had several people ask me if we're going to be doing uh, this, my study of Revelation uh, online. And, and the answer would be no. We're not going to be doing it as comprehensively as we will on Wednesday nights. But I will give you some summaries, the, the summaries of the messages I'm going to be bringing uh, each week. And so uh, hopefully you'll be getting the highlights and the gist of what we'll be talking about. And, and uh, there again, if you can join us. We'd love to have you join us, but I uh, want to lead us in a time of prayer right now, and then uh, and then we'll look at uh, Revelation chapter 1. We'll be actually looking at verse 9 through 11 uh, this afternoon, so in this evening. So let me lead us in prayer. Lord, I'm just so grateful for uh, this opportunity to get together online with folks and and uh, who love you and who are, who are seeking you, who are um, um, looking to you as, as Lord and Savior. And uh, Lord, we're grateful for just the privilege of having a relationship with you. And we know that it was only made possible, Jesus, because you died on that cross for our sins and you raised from the dead and that you're with us all the time. And we're so grateful that you've made it possible. You know, I think about Adam and Eve and walking with, uh, walking with you, Lord, in the, in the garden in the cool of the day and how that was forfeited when they did the thing that you forbid them to do. And, uh, and then it was... Uh, uh, the, the, the terrible consequences, but that that was that opportunity was restored, Jesus, when you paid for our sins on the cross. And it's though as though we can walk with you in the garden in the cool of the day and have a relationship, a father-child relationship with you, the, the perfect, uh, how it's designed to be father-child relationship with you. And I want to thank you for each person that's uh, tuned in to uh, this time online, and I just pray that you would reach your hand out and, and just touch them, that they would sense your presence in a supernatural way, that they would be overcome with peace, with tranquility, with joy, uh, with, with all those good things that you give to us as your children. And uh, Lord, we've got this prayer list here in front of us that we'll be going over tonight. And I just pray for each person on this prayer list. And I know there's such a variety of needs. There's been deaths in families. There's been hospitalizations. There's been surgeries. And uh, there's been loss of jobs and, and all of those things and illnesses. And I just pray for each of these and the variety of their needs. And I pray that you would meet their needs supernaturally. They would know that it's you who is intervening on their behalf. And they would just be overcome with gratitude to you for all that you're doing. I thank you that you work all things together for good. Sometimes you deliver us from challenges. Sometimes you just walk uh, with us through those valleys of the shadow of death. And and uh, But we fear no evil because you are with us and we're grateful for that. And uh, Lord, as we continue our study of the book of Revelation, I just pray that you'd speak to us by your Holy Spirit. I thank you for this great book. I, uh, I know it's challenging to understand and so many various interpretations and and, uh, and Lord, we're just uh, grateful for the assurance of your guidance through it, that you're going to show us what we need to know when we need to know it. And, and we're grateful for that. And, and uh, Lord, we just pray. I just pray for those who are online, those who are on our list. If there's anybody who doesn't know you yet, that they don't have that, that personal relationship with you, Jesus, that you came and died and rose for us to have. I pray that at some point uh, here in the new future, even in the next few moments, that, that you would make yourself very real to them and that, uh, that they would trust you, that you really did pay for their sins on the cross, and they would accept that free gift, and they would uh, confess with their mouth that you are Lord and believe in their heart that you raised from the dead. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for loving us and being so patient with us. And Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hopefully you have your Bibles there. We're going to be looking at Revelation chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 9. And what I'll do is we're going to, we're going to talk about three things tonight. We're going to look at the, at the human instrument, the human author. Last week, you remember, we looked at the authors. We saw that John uh, and then the Father and then the Holy Spirit and the Son were all instrumental in writing the book of Revelation. And uh, but, but then John goes a little further, gives a little more detail about himself. And so he talks about the relationship that he has with those that he's writing to. He talks about the circumstances that he is in as he writes this book. And, uh, and then he talks about his experience, how this was 
transmitted to him, how this, this book was, was given to him, this, this uh, revelation was given to him uh, as he wrote. And so as I read through this, we'll kind of talk about each of these very briefly. Verse 9, it says, I, John, your brother and companion uh, in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance uh, that are ours in Jesus. All right. So right here he talks about his relationship. He's our brother. He's our companion. Now, there's no doubt he didn't know every person in these seven churches. He certainly didn't know us, but yet he is our brother in Christ. Jesus makes it possible for us to have that brother-sister relationship with every one of his followers, whether we know them or not. And there's a there's a sense of family. That's why I, I refer to the church as, as a church family. And there's something uh, incredibly unique and special about that relationship. Not only is our you know, brother, he's also a companion in some challenging circumstances. And we're never alone. Not only is the Lord with us, but there are other believers that have gone through what we're going through, who are facing what we are now uh, facing. And there's something encouraging about knowing that there are people that we can relate to us, that, that we can relate to, people that can empathize with where we are and what we're feeling and and, uh, and how we're hurting. And so uh, he is our brother and he is our companion. He goes, uh, I was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And so we've talked about that a little bit last week. He was a prisoner. Now, it's interesting because uh, this word uh, was on the island of Patmos almost indicates, uh, could indicate, because it's in the aorist tense, that it was past tense, that, that this was something that he was, but he was no longer there. And there are some who, who uh, believe that maybe he was released and able to leave the island of Patmos and had um, some other um, ministry opportunities after that. But that's debatable. He could have spent his life and died on the island of Patmos. But he, he was on Patmos when he had this experience, when he had this vision uh, that we'll be talking about in the next, over the next couple of weeks. He was on this island and he was there because of his testimony of Jesus. And you know, I wonder... Uh, what we would be willing to give up. And we live in a country where we experience religious freedom. And so we don't meet under fear of, of arrest or fear of, of harassment. Um, but, but if we were, if we didn't live in this country, I wonder how willing we would be to suffer for Jesus. Would we willing be willing to go to jail, to be, to be uh, placed on the island of Patmos, because of our testimony of Jesus. And obviously he was, and that's exactly what he did. And we see many throughout history, and we have many, many brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world that are being persecuted in this way this at this moment. And uh, we need to be supportive towards them and encouraging towards them and prayerful toward uh, them. And that's the situation that he was in. Uh, that was the circumstances. Now I want to look at uh, his experience. What, what was his experience? Beginning in verse 10, it says, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. Okay. Now, there may have been other prisoners there. It seems to be an indication he was kind of in solitary confinement, kind of isolated there on the island of Patmos. But regardless of whether there were others around, he was on the Lord's day. Um, now, you assume that that's going to be on Sunday since the church had begun to meet on Sunday in celebration of the resurrection and so that they could also participate in the Sabbath on Saturday. Um, but on the Lord's day, he was in the spirit. Now, we're not sure what all that means. We're not sure exactly what that looks like. I know that there have been many, many occasions and every single Sunday, in fact, every day of my life, I try to be in the Spirit. I try to be led by the Spirit. I try to be mindful of what the Spirit is directing me to do, who to call, who to contact, who to visit, and and uh, and living under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's what he's talking about. And, and he makes a point of that. I was in the Spirit. I was quiet. I was introspective. I was in tune with the Spirit of God. And, and when I was, uh, this is what happened. Uh, he says, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Right? Now, I don't know about you, but I've never heard the Lord's voice audibly. And it's always, it's always to me, kind of like a thought. A lot of times he'll bring a scripture to mind, and that's the message that he'll give to me. A lot of times it'll just be, hey, I want you to make contact with this person, uh, and they're in need, and, and they need a touch from me, and I want to use you to do it. It's such an honor when he does that. But in this case, John heard 
the voice of the Lord audibly like a trumpet. It was loud. And we talked more about that. Of course, Daniel had a very similar experience and talked about how the Lord spoke to him audibly. And so we can't discount the fact that he does on occasion speak to people audibly. Uh, but we can't also say, well, he's never spoken to me audibly, so I must be a second-rate uh, Christian, or you know, he's never spoken to you audibly, he's spoken to me, so you must be a, a second-class believer. Um, we can't have that attitude, but in this case, I'm so grateful that he spoke, and when he spoke, there was no question in John's mind who was talking, and there was no question what he was saying, and it was the Lord, and it was behind him. So it says, uh, I heard the voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And so uh, again, the repetition of the seven churches, as we talked about last week, I think he chose the number seven very deliberately so that we would know that's the number of a completeness. And so the letter is designed not only for these seven churches, but every church in every age until he returns. And uh, so he's preparing John. So John, you're about to see some stuff. Um, you probably won't understand a lot of it yourself. Some of the things you, you, that I'm about to tell you, you probably, you'll know it's coming in the future, but you don't know what, exactly what it's going to look like. And we're still in that same boat, still trying to figure out exactly what everything means that Jesus showed to John uh, through this experience. And so uh, we're going to be walking through it verse by verse. Some things we'll, I think, be able to, to understand completely what it means and what it's pointing to. Other things that obviously uh, we won't. And very intelligent people, very godly people have very divergent opinions on, on what those things mean. But I'm glad you've joined us. And I hope that that as we do this summary uh, each week, that you'll get a lot out of it and you'll get you know, perhaps as much out of it as uh, we will on, on in the evening prayer gathering. And again, we invite you to come join us in our prayer gathering. Uh, if at all possible, we'd, we'd be honored for you to uh, be here. So thank you for joining us for this time. God bless you and I, I hope you have a great afternoon. Uh, we'll see you soon.